Over a hundred years ago in 1923, Sir Apirangata, Terangi Hirua, James MacDonald, Alsden Best and Johannes Anderson documented making a pā taurimu fishwear in the Waiapu River. Unbeknown to them, this would be the last ever recorded catch of the Upokororo in Aotearoa. The pā taurimu was made using kanuka and manuka, both a native myrtle species. Last year, a hundred years on, the pā taurimu was recreated to commemorate that last sighting. The manuka, it, it's mainly the brush that's used to line the line the sides of the weir and, and anyone that knows manuka it's prickly when you compare it to kanuka. And so yeah, I think that as the fish come down and they hit the sides and oh, they get pricked and so they end up back in the flow of the water and then caught in the flow and swept into the net. These little ingenious things that our keeping have done, you know, to better their success rate at scoring a kai. The same materials were used this time around to highlight the environmental threats to these tipu. We've got a myrtle rust project going at the same time and so I saw an opportunity that um, we could get some messaging across because the pā tauremu, the fish trap, was constructed out of um, manuka and kanuka. So this is kanuka and manuka behind me and um, they're native myrtles and um, who's to say that within a hundred years, because of the introduction of myrtle rust now, that they may or may not be still with us. So that's the messaging we were going to share. I just think they done what they done for a reason, and the reason was they could see that all that mātauranga around the traditional ways of sourcing kai, growing kai, was in very real risk of being lost. Myrtle rust is a fungal disease that kills myrtles. It's already wiped out Ramarama on the east coast. It's also been found on the largest pohutukawa in Aotearoa, Te Waho Orere Kohu, situated in Te Araroa. These tipu are all part of the myrtle whānau. Currently, there is no solution. There is a high risk of us losing a lot of the ngahere because our ngahere is full of myrtles from the vines to the trees to the shrubs to the, the climbing on ones on the ground, even the ground covers. So there's a whole lot of myrtles that could potentially all be wiped out. There's multiple effects that can happen from the loss of our myrtle species, especially in terms of ngua with manuka, kanuka, of all of our um, rako Māori certainly will have a huge impact on our economy, not just for Māori, but for Pākehā, for our whole entire country. Honey, bees, winter kai for our manu, to our children being able to enjoy these, these rāko. This could be the beginning of the end for some of our, our myrtle species. They're the main riparian species of our whenua. When you see uh, regenerative forests, we always see manuka and kanuka within that. So they're the first tree plant healers of Papatūnuku and it's so important for us to make sure that this rust doesn't impact them in the way that it is impacting other myrtle species. I think that would be really sad if we lost those those in particular because they're very iconic species for not just Te Tairawhiti but Aotearoa whanui. Um, Puhutukawa is you know, that we kind of symbolised to bring in the, the, the summer, really, the Christmas period. The manuka, we know all the different things we use manuka for. Kanuka is pretty dominant in Te Tairawhiti. If, if in a hundred years they're not no longer around, that our, our uri won't be able to experience the blossoms of, of any of those trees, you know. Without the manuka and kanuka industry for beekeepers, that could have dire effects for the industry. Um, you would have beekeepers leaving the industry, meaning less pollinators for the orchards and all our fruits and veggies. We want to find a solution to this, this problem. It's bad. Things are looking dire for some of our species, in particular the ramarama, the rohutu and the swamp maire. If we don't find solutions quick for the rest of the species, we're going to see functional 
extinction, just like we've seen with those other three species. We're here today because our Rako Rangitida, um, Te Waha Ore Kuhu, has Myrtle Rust on it. Um, we've called a community hui to gather our whanau around to talk to them about it, um, what it is, um, and what that possibly could mean, not only for our Rako here, but for all our other um, native myrtle trees. I believe there's no cure for the myrtle rust, is that correct? <laughs> At this moment in time, yep, that's true. So, uh, the effect it's having on our tree, what sort of protection have we got towards her life? Part of our what our our kaimahi do in the myrtle project is um they're looking for resistance. So resistance at this time is like the, the only hope really. So. They've, they've done a lot of searches around the township on, um, on the Bunakoa. Most of them have all got various varying um, levels of infection on them. Some of them are riddled. And um, some like Bitaku just got light, light myrtle rust on them. But um, I think as we go through time and um, track what the, what the rust is up to on the myrtle rust, I just think it'll, it's not going to end too well for the Bunakoa because what I've noticed since um, 2018 is the infected Budokawa, especially the younger ones, it um, knocks them over. I'm an optimist by nature, so I'm hopeful that our Rako will, will um, fight the disease, but um, certainly it makes us think about the future and and how we to protect the whakapapa yeah, of our rako yeah. here. So not the just our buhutakawa, but all our myrtle species, ramarama, how do we protect them into the future? The initial um, reaction from the community was, I think, very pody, with the rerekohu tree being um, such a significant part of te Aroro community, but also the wider tairawhiti. But I also think that they want to get behind the solutions. Because it's, it's on the school grounds of the main, the main school in Te Araro, so it was always going to be a big focus of this project to involve our tamariki and whatever the, the management decisions are, you know, they're the future kaitiaki. So we involved the kids in the monitoring, gathering all the data, you know, found Muro Rust on, on Rerekuhu in March last year. The progress we've made so far on Rerikuhu was we're going to be looking at seed trolls and so there's a lot of trees around the school and around the, the streets of Te Araro that are um, grown from their, their uri or progeny from the big tree and so we're not going to be doing the trials on the big tree, no one's brave enough to do that but the, the uri of um, Rerikuhu are planted in beautification plantings around the Te Araro street so we'll be trialling the different sprays on those trees and, and they're, they're also um, infected with myrtle rust as well. Predominantly the east coast from Anoda Bay upwards is made of putakawa and so for me to change the face of the land is to change who we are and what are some of the mitigations or some of the solutions we can uh, intercept and put in place to either slow the rate of myrtle rust growing or even stop it. It would be devastating for our coastline. That's the what holds and stabilises our coastline is a lot of those Pukdakawa. I first found Muro Rust in our home Rohe in 2018. That was it on Ramarama up around um, Portaka, Lotton Point. And um, yeah, I was, I'll never forget the day. Muro Rust is here to stay. It's been in the country since 2017, so no one can safely say how this is going to play out because this is a new organism in a, in a totally new environment. And so to have clarity of where this is going to go, we just don't know. Right now, the current situation is we've probably lost two species. They're both in Lofamurus, so that's Ramarama and Rohutu. Why I say we've lost them is because all the young seedlings of both those species were the first ones lost in the first couple of years and then we've got 
the situation where we've got adult tree deaths. So the seedlings were future generations and losing the adults is, you know, future seed source. So basically both those species have become functionally extinct here. And we've also found myrtle rust on three of our climbing rata species. The minister at the time, Kitty Tapu Allen, she put it to myself and um, a couple of good friends, Tina Ngata and Rena Kohere, what we thought a, a response plan would look like. So that was pretty much the genesis of Te Whakapai Ururo, our Myrtle Rust project. Te Whakapai Ururo is a happy response from Ngāti Purau and Te Whanoa Apanui towards Myrtle Rust. Ko tērā te mahi, um, find a solution for myrtle rust. Um, we're really determined to study the behaviour and what remedies we can use to either slow the rust or prevent the rust. We're capturing data of what the myrtle rust is doing to our ngahere and without that data we can't feed um, the scientists to um, develop solutions. We're the um, foot soldiers I suppose. We're seeing it and feeling it every day. Is it the only spot? Or is it a bit more? Yeah, it looks like we've found some man. And so what we're doing here is just gathering that data on on the tree um, to see um, how much of this new flush, which is all the new leaves here, and then how much, if we do find rust, how much of that rust is on those new leaves. Um, and then we're also looking at if there's any flower buds, um, any flowers, if we've got any, um, and then fruits as well, or seed pods. We actually are really um, stoked we haven't found it on Kanuka yet. Um, we have found a small bit on Manuka. We've just been monitoring the tree where we've found a small part, but because we haven't found a huge uh, lot of it, there's not a lot for us to monitor at the moment. So we are looking for raka that are resistant to the myrtle rust. So, so an area like we're in now, uh, well, for example, the ramarama here, and let's say, you know, 90% of those ramarama have all got myrtle rust, but then you've got one really healthy ramarama right in the middle there. That one could be the one, the tree that's resistant to the myrtle rust. So we could, on the ground, you know, gather cuttings from that particular raka and then propagate them in a nursery. We are also looking into discussions with other ropu around other maybe rongwa Māori that we could use? I think there's been a lot of positives, um, even just our own kaimahi that are employed here on our whenua. Um, we're the ones out there um, doing the researching with the helps of others, but it's us, it's coming from us. Um, we're working with our whānau and our community to work out what the project actually looks like for us as a whānau. We're not giving up hope. No one's seen evidence of myrtle rust on the kanaka and kanaka is a native myrtle and so we're thinking that there's something in the kanaka that may be resistant to myrtle rust or this strain of myrtle rust and so we've got our manaka factory in Tiararo and that they harvest um, the manaka brush to, to make it into um, manaka oil so we're looking at doing something similar but with kanaka oil and so at present we're doing spray trials to see if a kanaka hides a soul slowing or halting or killing the myrtle rust. So yeah, there's a little glimmer of hope out there. We do have the ability to change things. So for me, uh, raising the awareness, getting the word out um, is hugely important to a kaupapa. My biggest fear if, um, if we don't find a solution in fast is our tie, our, our environment, our physical environment will would look so different. I do worry that we won't be leaving a legacy behind uh, a ngahere for our mokopuna. Te whakapai ururoa. It comes from a, um, I think a saying or a whakatauki around um, kind of staying strong through adversities because, you know, the majority of our mahi is considered kind of sad mahi or, you know, you're, you're finding myrtle rust, you know, it's not a good thing that we find it. Um, but through that, we can still fight through all of the things like myrtle rust and, and others, other kind of take that come through. What's driving me in this space is um, just being from here. 
Um, it's my whole kainga. Um, I love I love being here. Um, I love that my kids are growing up here, and um, it's up to us um, to be responsible responsible for what's happening in our community. While the next hundred years may look uncertain for our myrtle species, we can be sure that the community will continue to fight. <laughs>